It, it only took you 50 years, but you made it. <laughs> yes, that's right. Was this a bucket list item for you? Uh, I'd never thought of it, to okay. be, tell you the truth. But, uh, you know, I, I've been watching Disney since I was a kid. You know, Sunday nights, Disney, getting around the TV set, parents, my sister, my brother. Uh, it was always a big deal. And as, you know, as I've grown up and watched my own kids, now my grandkids, you know, Disney has been a part of their life in many different ways. And then suddenly this kind of fell into my lap, you know, literally fell into my lap. So what, what happened? I, I, I'm curious how some, they approached someone like you <laughs> to do this. Uh, I was catching a flight uh, at Pearson. I was going through security. And there's a guy behind me in the security line. He says, I'm with Disney. I was just in a meeting. We were talking about you as a voice in our new animated feature. And I'm thinking, yeah, sure, you're from Disney. Um, it was a busy time, you know, as it always is at an airport. So we exchange cards. And sure enough, I get an email. And it's the real deal. Hmm. And they actually wanted to talk about me doing this cameo role, as you say. It's a, you know, it's, it, it's a short role, but it's a critical role. Okay. Chad. It's a big deal. The movie falls apart without my little role. Okay, no spoilers, but uh, <laughs> no, a cameo, no spoilers. but a critical cameo. Yeah. Tell us what the movie's about. It's about a modern day city with all modern day, uh, you know, problems, uh, ups and downs, but it's a city with no humans. It's all animals. And there are all kinds of themes through it and lessons uh, for, for an audience, especially for a younger audience, um, that deal with a lot of the kind of issues that we face uh, today in, in growing up. Mm -hmm. But also, I guess, the, the overarching issue is you can make it. You know, you, you can set your goals high. If you want something, you can achieve it. Uh, and so that happens within a movie that's really a lot of fun. It's, it's amazing how they do that with Disney movies and animated movies, because mm -hmm. this one touches on some topical yep. issues as well. Racial stereotypes, yes. corrupt politicians. Mm -hmm. It's incredible how they're able to do that. They are the able to, to weave it all through in, as I say, an entertainment. There, there, there are moments in this movie where you will be laughing very hard. Mm. Not just for the fact that I'm in it, but <laughs> but for really good reasons. So this is a lot of fun for mm -hmm. you, but you're also a journalist. Yep. What kind of considerations do you have to make when you're deciding on a project like this? Well, uh, you know, usually we say no to this mm -hmm. uh, kind of a situation. Um, but this was different. You know, I, you know, I, uh, I argued that, first of all, A, you know, we have a longstanding relationship with Disney. Uh, that goes back decades. Uh, as I said, back to when I was a kid, I can remember watching Disney on CBC on Sunday nights. So there was there was that. Um, there was the fact that this is you know primarily aimed at a younger audience. Um, I do a lot of stuff with with uh, various uh, television programs at the CBC that are uh, geared towards children. Mm -hmm. uh, so there there was that, and there was there's nothing wrong in the role that I'm playing. There's nothing <clears throat> bad in it, or can be taken a different way. So that eventually became the the uh, the argument that that won out within the you know the, the yeah. CBC the arguments that happened exactly. And you got all the appropriate paperwork stamped and and all I that. I did. Okay. Yeah. Now due diligence is a vital part of a journalist's job. Mm -hmm. So what steps did you take to research playing a moose? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, probably not enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they wanted my voice as opposed to my voice trying to pretend I was a moose. They, okay. they wanted the Mansbridge voice in it. Yeah. Although they did say, you know, th th this was pretty neat. They wanted me to go to L.A. to do this, when I really wanted to go to L.A. to do it. But the recordings were taken last summer, right in the middle of the election campaign. I said, I can't, I can't go. Uh, so we did it here in Toronto, and they set up a studio with a two-way video feed so the hmm. producers and everybody were sitting in L.A. and were watching all this. But they said, you know, we, you're a moose, you're a Canadian moose. We want you to sound Canadian, you know, like, and you throw in a, in a boot here or there. And I said, you know, we don't really say a boot. You know, I don't know where this comes from. And they said, well, when you say a boot, we hear a boot, no matter what you think you're saying. Um, <laughs> so anyway. You, so you, you provided some insight for them on that. Yes, I, I tried to give them a, a lesson about, <laughs> about Canadiana. What, what was voice actor work like for you? Uh, it was fun. You know, it, it was different. I hadn't done that since my radio days, which are, you know, almost 50 years ago. But, um, it, you know, it was, it was pretty straight. I don't want to overstate. My role. It is a short cameo role. I'm mm -hmm. only there for a bit. They booked. It kind of scared me because they booked the studio for four hours. And I thought, really, four hours? You know, there's really not a lot here. 
<laughs> and you have some experience. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, – but nevertheless, it took an hour because they were very particular about stuff. They were, you know, I, I was, I got to say, I was really, really impressed with the, the, the Disney people. They were everything I, I thought they'd be in, being highly professional, very concerned about their work and, and very caring um, uh, about how things unfolded. So, mm-hmm. you know, there were, there were a fair number of takes, not, not a lot, but there were a fair number. And uh, it worked out great. Now, you said you were a fan of Disney, your kids were, and mm-hmm. now your grandkids are big fans of Frozen. Yeah, um, but, you know, we don't mention that word anymore. It's like there's only one word. It's Zootopia. Yeah, you boldly <laughs> predicted that Zootopia is going to change all that. You're going to be the new Elsa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe, that's, uh, maybe that's what I should, uh, I should aim for. It's funny with my grandkids who, you know, who are young. Um, they really, the fact that I do what I do in, in my real life is not of much interest to them. <laughs> but this... They're like over the moon about this. This is scoring you some points. This is scoring big points. Okay, last last question Mm -hmm. for you, Peter. It's been a big year for journalists with Spotlight up for Best Picture at the Oscars this weekend. Who would you want to play you uh, (laughs) if there was a Peter Mansbridge uh, biopic? Uh, You know, Robert Redford, Brad Pitt, you know, the the normals, the people that look just like me. (laughs) We'll line them up. (laughs) Thank you so much, Peter. Thanks, Shad. It's great.